Okay, so in this video, we are gonna be creating a female character bust in Blender, and we are gonna be starting with the same Dishonored style character bust that we created in the last few videos. So we're essentially gonna be using this character as the base mesh for our new head sculpt. I'll also be covering the entire process for sculpting out a new bust, doing the hair, and also modeling some accessories. So if this all sounds interesting to you, then I would love it if you considered subscribing and hitting the bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. Also, if you're looking to get some feedback or helpful suggestions on your own current projects in Blender or any other 3D application, then maybe you wanna jump into my new community Discord. I'll be active in there and providing feedback and critiques for you at the next month. So uh, feel free to jump in so I'm not so lonely. All right, without further ado, let's get into the video. So I have all the parts from our Dishonored style character bust in their own collection. I'm gonna duplicate the collection and then simply delete all the other parts except for the head. With the head selected, I'm gonna take it into sculpt mode and I'm going to immediately remesh it at a voxel size of 0.05. This is basically going to destroy all the detailing that we did and lower the resolution of the mesh to something that's great to start with. From here, I'm just gonna start smoothing things out and using the grab brush to push things into the general proportions that I'm looking for. Basically, this whole head will be reduced to something that simply has the basic proportions and some of the anatomical landmarks that we're looking for. So this begs the question that if we're gonna knock things so far back, then why not just start from scratch? Now, you can certainly do that, and I highly recommend going back and watching the original videos that we started with. However, starting from something rather than nothing is just one of many steps that I take to help save time so that I can get more projects done faster. Just like I did right there, I simply borrowed the eyes from our previous character bust and I inserted them on our new one. Starting with the low resolution head simply meant that I had a few anatomical details and basic shapes already set up in advance. Now, with this head sculpt, I'm gonna be taking it to a point where it's a fairly decent, but very generic looking female head sculpt. In fact, I save a separate iteration of this head sculpt when it gets to a certain point so that I can actually use it in future projects as my base female head sculpt if I want to. Now, if you're having difficulty with your uh, knowledge of anatomy when it comes to sculpting, there's a number of good videos, courses, and other resources out there that you can check out. You can even watch plenty of people who are using other programs such as ZBrush or 3D Coat and simply translate the skills into a program like Blender. Also, I'll leave links down below in the description to some books that I find very helpful for learning to sculpt anatomy. For now, the sculpting process is going to look a little bit generic, as I'm just primarily focused on continually polishing and adding a little bit of detail at this point. As I go on, I'm gonna add some more details and indications of more feminine features, as well as start to incorporate some stylization. So, if you watched the previous videos, then you know I primarily only rely on the standard Blender sculpting tools, but I'll go over what those are real quick. So I primarily use the Draw and the Clay Strips brush to build up my forms while sculpting. I'll also use the Draw Sharp brush to cut into forms and create wrinkles and fine crease lines. I'll use these brushes in conjunction with what I like to call the deformation brushes, which are primarily the Pinch, Inflate, and Grab brush. Throughout a large portion of the sculpting process, I'll leave Dynatopo turned on, set to constant detail, starting at a resolution of 25, and then upping it in increments of 25 as I steadily want to build more dense geometry. Once the dense geometry starts to bog down my computer a little bit, I'll turn Dynatopo off and only strategically use it by applying resolution with the Simplify brush. 
Now, the look I'm going for is something that isn't overtly stylized or very realistic. Keeping with the theme of the Dishonored style character bust that we've done previously, I wanted this to appear like something that exists in its own world. I'm not going to go overboard with the harsh wrinkles and asymmetric detail like we did previously. However, as I continue to work on the face, I might push or exaggerate certain areas to make them more pronounced, to keep an overall semi-real stylization to the character. So, like the previous character, we're going to be sculpting out the basis of the hair as opposed to creating a hair shader or creating hair cards. So, I'll start by creating a new cube, remeshing it, and essentially smoothing it out until it fits inside the cranium. Then I'll use my basic sculpting tools to just build out the forms of the hair. I'll use the draw sharp brush and the pinch brush to help create some curvilinear forms that create the impression of hair strands and the overall flow of the hair. I'm also going to mask and extract a small portion of geometry which I'll use for the eyebrows. Once this is extracted, it'll have a solidify modifier which I'll apply. I'll then go into sculpt mode, smooth it out, and just add a little bit of detailing to create the eyebrows. Once I'm happy with the eyebrows, the next thing we're going to start working on is creating some longer hair strands using curve objects. So I'm going to start by inserting a bezier curve and then a circle curve. Now the circle curve is going to serve as the bevel object for our bezier curve. Going into edit mode, I'll adjust the vertices of the circle curve to create a more interesting shape profile for our hair strands. Now, with the circle curve selected as our bevel object on the Bezier curve, I'll begin moving the Bezier curve into place on our character. I'll adjust the shape of the hair strand to something that I like, and I'll use Alt-S to adjust the width of the shape profile. I'll then use Shift-D to duplicate the hair strands around the character and adjust them accordingly. I'll also use proportional editing to help make adjustments over larger areas. I'll take some time to build up the shape of the hair by creating strands of different sizes. When I'm happy with what I've got, I'll duplicate off one strand and I'll start creating the basis of the ponytail. As I start to build out the shape of the ponytail, I realize I'm going to want a different shape profile. So I'm going to create another circle curve. I'll give it an interesting profile and I'll set this curve to be the bevel object for our ponytail bezier curve. I'll continue to work on the ponytail until I'm happy with the overall shape. I'll also create another bevel circle which I'll use to create a hair band around the base of the ponytail. Now that I'm fairly happy with the hair, I'll begin sculpting the bust. So, like everything, I'll drop in a cube, remesh it, and begin to sculpt it into the form that I'm looking for. Now, I'm going for something that has several layers, such as a shirt with a jacket over it. So, eventually, I'm going to duplicate out this first base sculpt and then inflate it to start creating the jacket over the shirt. Okay, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about sculpting the bust in this video because I already cover it pretty in depth in the second part of the Dishonored character bust creation. So please feel free to reference that video if you're looking for more information on how to do a character bust like this. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead a little bit to where we're going to start modeling a headset for our character. When doing a character bust like this, it's a great idea to look for as many ways that you can create accessories or other little elements that just serve to add more personality or even a storytelling element to your character bust. Going into this project, I can't say I really had a firm idea of who this character was or what their backstory is, but as I continued to work on it, I could certainly say that I was influenced by a number of the movies that I've been watching in the last few weeks. Also, just like with the Titanfall style helmet, I'm someone who's fairly proficient at modeling hard surface objects, and I wanted to look for an excuse to get something else modeled in here. 
I'm sure in a future video, we'll do something where we go uh, a lot more overboard, maybe doing a full suit of very hard surface sci-fi style armor or something of that sort. In this instance, modeling the headset helps to create some contrast that separates it from all the softer organic shapes that we've sculpted on the character. I'm going to spend a little bit more time refining the headset and adding in a few more details. Once I'm done with it, we're going to set up a render scene using Blender EV. Okay, so to start creating our render scene, I'm going to go to the shader editor and I'm going to start creating a new world graph. I'm going to import an HDRI from HDRI Haven, one that has a very muted color palette and fairly overcast lighting, because I don't want it to have a tremendous amount of influence on our lighting setup. Now, I don't want to see the HDRI in the background, so I'm going to create a mix shader and a light path node. I'll select the camera ray output and connect that to the factor input of the mix shader. Then I'll create a second background setup. This will be made using a gradient texture. By using the camera ray output of the light path node, this means that the lighting from the HDRI will still be affecting and visible on our character bust, but it won't be visible in the background. Meanwhile, the gradient texture will not affect the lighting of our scene. Next, I'll start to create some area lights and look for ways to create an interesting lighting setup. Now, there's a lot of creative things that you can do in the lighting stage, and I definitely encourage you to play around. One of the things I like to play with is the edge lighting, which I'm using this harsh, highly saturated orange light to create. Now, to create the impression of a really strong light or even a fire burning in the background, you can go to the color of this edge light and push the vibrance value past the max value of one. This will create something that has a very strong intensity. Now, I'm also going to be testing out this lighting setup on our previous character bust as well. So, before I call this finished, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to make some quick changes to our female character bust. I'm going to adjust the facial expression and make a few minor tweaks just to give the character somewhat of the super serious or somewhat callous expression that we had on the previous character bust. So even though I could call the sculpting finished at this point, I just want to spend a little bit more time adding some visual interest around the eyes. I'll also do some things like inflate the lips and make a few minor adjustments to the nose but this just goes to show how quickly you can make some rapid iterations to your sculpting. So throughout the course of this demo, I've showed you how you can transform one character bust into an entirely different character bust. So I'll also reiterate from the beginning of the video that if you're looking to get some feedback or critique on your 3D sculpting or other 3D projects, then consider checking out my newly opened community discord. I'll be active in there throughout the next month, and I'll be offering critiques and feedbacks on anybody who requests it. So I wish everyone the best on their own creative projects, and I hope you found some part of this video informative or enjoyable. So until the next video, get those projects done, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.